My name is William Bartram. Having explored this river with my father, I decided to return on my own to note, to observe, to collect and save as many specimens as I could. So now, my journey nearly over, I've decided to take a rest under this beautiful live oak to take some notations in my manuscripts in this as yet undiscovered part of Florida. Bartram, wake up, Mr. Bartram. Oh. You have company. <laughs> Oh, Hello. Uh, I'm sorry if you've uh, stopped to ask for directions, I can't be of much help. Uh, well, my name is William Bartram, William Bartram, and uh, you've caught me here across the river from Spalding's upper store, just across the river. I'm on my way back down the St. John's River, up to Spalding's lower store, and then I'll catch some commercial transportation back to Pennsylvania. Now, uh, this is my second trip down the San Juan River. You call it the St. John's. I traveled this, this river once with my father, 1766. His name is John Bartram. And John Bartram was the botanist to the royal king of England. And I learned my trade, watching my father take samples, make drawings, catalog. And I determined after the trip with my father that I would like to explore the St. John's myself. Last fall, I'd hoped to explore the river, but I was climbing a pine tree to find an anomaly in the growth of a pine tree and I fell down and was wounded and had to postpone the trip until April. Now I began the trip, I met up with Saint, the St. John's at a place called Calford. It was called Calford because it was the most advantageous place to cross the San Juan River, moving cattle back and forth from the peninsula up to the markets in North Florida and Georgia. Now, across the river, I was furnished with a fine boat with a sail by a Mr. Egan from the, uh, from the Egmont plantations further north. And I set out with, a, with, a, with an assistant to explore the upper St. John's River. Now, we have to be careful here because the St. John's River flows north. And so when we go from Calford to Astor to Blue Springs, we are going up the river. But I started out a leisurely, at a leisurely place, stopping at Or Ortega for a night. We knew a lot of the plantation owners. It's really amazing how developed agriculturally it is along the sides of the St. John's River. Many plantations, formerly they'd been operated by Spanish. Presently they are owned and operated by British. And one of the key things to kind of remember, but not always, is that generally the colonialists and farmers were on the east side of the river, and the west side of the river was considered Indian territory. But not always. Always exceptions to the rule. So one of the early stops that I made was a place called New Switzerland. A fellow named Frederick Philip Fatio. A wonderful man. A, a very educated man. He brought over with him his books and fine wine. And so I stopped at his plantation and he took me around for a tour, some 5,000 acres, planted in orange groves, corn, all sorts of fruits and vegetables that you would need. 
So after having given myself refreshed from him, I started heading on down the San Juan River. And I have a bit of a map here so I can refresh my memory after you woke me from my doze here. <laughs> I can refresh my memory of some of my most memorable stops. After having stopped at Switzerland and been refreshed, I stopped at a place called Picolada, former, formerly a Spanish fort. The fort had been raided by Indians. There were some fighting going back and forth. The fort had been raided. It was burned. There was nothing left there. Six years ago, it had been, in fact, a working fort, but it was no more. I came down place, by, by a place called Forrester Point. Now it's called Forrester Point because it's an advantageous place for the foresters to take the trees and put them on ships and send them down river. And as I went by, there were many, many huge cypress trees. The cypress tree being a favorite. They grew to three foot, four foot, sometimes five foot in diameter, 80 feet in the air. Now people knew this cypress tree is a wonderful wood. The wood cut right can look flawless. It's, it's, weather, it's impervious to weather for the most part and to bugs. So it was a very favored tree for these foresters to take. Now these forests are out, these, these trees are out in the swamp. So how do you fell a tree that's five feet tall, five feet wide in a swamp? Well, they built a deck, a deck around it. And the slaves would go in with their axes and chop and chop and chop until the tree was down. So I, I, passed, uh, I came past Forrester Point and I was anxious to come around the bend and to Palatka. Where on prior trips I had seen the Indian tribe up on the bluff there with their neat homes, with their neat orange trees. And as I passed by, I don't know if they did recognize me at that time, but I waved, said hello, and they were all seemed very friendly. I came around out of Palatka, took that big turn out of Palatka, back around to San Mateo, where Raleigh's plantation was. Now Raleigh had tried to start a kind of a utopian sort of society, and he peopled it with beggars, debtors, prostitutes, some of the disadvantaged from his home in Europe. It didn't work, it didn't work. When I came down through, there was only the man who was left to tend the, the acreage and, and a blacksmith. So I wasn't able to visit with Raleigh, but uh, there were many, and this, and this happened a lot, there were many people who invested, thought they would love to have a plantation in the new world, and found out they had little for the patients, the labor was a problem. Uh, I ran past many of those farms. As a matter of fact, I had invested in one at a place called Green Cove. There was a spring came out there. I had invested in one. Thought I might want to be a farmer. Well, the harbor was not very good. The land wasn't very good. And I wasn't a very good manager. And that farm failed. As I came around, at, it was at uh, Raleigh's town, where Raleigh had his thing that I had heard that my goods that I had sent down, I had sent a big chest with my books and my papers and all that sort of stuff, to the Spalding Lower Store, just south of Palatka. There had been some uh, trouble with the Indians around, and they had had to take my stuff from the Lower Store and bring it to a place called Murphy's Island, out on the St. John's River. And I found out that my goods, th that the piece had been restored, my goods had been put back at the Spalding Lower Store. And so I went there and I collected my goods and I spent a good, minute, a good amount of time there. And I was invited to take a trip off from the river 
out towards Cuscoilla. Cuscoilla. We got our horses and some help and we went out to Cuscoilla and I met Chief Cuscoilla. Chief Payne was his name. He had a pet name for me. Puck Puggy. Puck Puggy. I asked him, what is that? He said, that is the flower picker. <laughs> you go around picking all the flowers. Well, Payne's Prairie out there, the Alachua Savannah, is named after Chief Cowcatcher from Cuscoilla. I returned to the lower store and then began my ascent up the river. Past Little Lake George, Mount Royal, Mount Hope, there, there were some amazing Indian mounds, ceremonial grounds, still intact. They weren't, they weren't inhabited, but they were still intact. And you could see that this was a very sacred place for a sort of civilized group of people to meet, possibly trade, etc. Coming out of that area down to Large Lake George, past Rocky Point, and over on the left, Drayton Island. We, I stopped in at Drayton Island, put in, spent the night there, populated by herds of deer, bear. It was filled, birds all around on, on, on Lake George. It was on Lake George that I came into contact with the Anhinga. The Anhinga, anybody know what the Anhinga is? It is. It has several names, a turkey bird, a, a snake bird, a cormorant. It's a bird with a very long neck that dives down into the river. And there were flocks all over Lake George. As I came down Lake George, I, I came down on the west side and I stopped at Crystal Springs, a beautiful, beautiful place with cypress trees and oak trees and the beautiful Magnolia grandiflora. Just a beautiful place on earth. One of God's greatest creations in my book. Anxious to get on with my trip, I came down to the bottom of Lake George. I came down to the bottom of Lake George and only five miles up and I landed here at Spalding's Upper Store. I took a quick, I took a trip further up the river. I want to mention a couple of stories to you. One was at Lake Dexter with the alligator battle. Imagine, if you will, the beast entering from the flags and reeds. His body grows in size, his tail high, flipping in the water, and you hear that mighty roar, and he slowly makes his way out to the middle of the lagoon. When you see his rival come from the other side and slowly make his way to the middle of the lagoon, and a huge battle ensues. They grasp one another, wrestle, twist, turn, go down below, the mud comes up from the bottom. Suddenly, they pop up, grasp for another turn, turn to, return to the bottom, until finally, the victor comes up, and the vanquished challenger goes off, and the victor gives a mighty roar. It's a tremendous sight. I went further on down, and I, I got to Beardsford Plantation. Some of you might know Beardsford, Beardsford's Plantation. At Beardsford's Plantation, I ran into a storm, one of the Florida tropical storms. Un, unannounced, I was on the western side. I could only make it. I couldn't stay out in the open. I had to make it across to the banks, tied up under the banks. My boat was tossed and tossed and filled with water. I lost, I, much of my stuff got wet. But I made it and then I was invited to go down to Blue Springs. And so I turned around and I've made haste back up here to Spalding's Lower Store where, I'll take, where I've taken a rest and I'll make my way back up to the Lower Store and catch commercial transportation back to Pennsylvania. Thank you very much for stopping. I appreciate it. Thank you.